Hello and welcome to North Penn News. I'm Tony DiDemizio. And I'm Sarah Connett. In our first story, as weather gets colder, North Penn High School students got ready for the winter ball. North Penn News reporter Bob Psycho has the story. On Saturday, December 6th, the North Penn High School held its annual winter ball. The winter ball was held in the high school gymnasium for the first time due to the number in attendance. The full event. We have about 1,200 people here tonight, and it seems like the excitement level is high. Mr. Frederick. This is a great evening. We're uh, very happy the junior class has provided the leadership for the winter ball. We're looking uh, forward to an exciting evening. As part of their class responsibilities, the juniors decorated the gymnasium with balloons and Christmas lights to set the mood for the night. A disc jockey provided the music, which ranged from slow songs to the latest dance hits. At 11 o'clock, the winter ball ended and became another memorable event in North Penn history. For North Penn News, I'm Bob Zyko. On Saturday, November 22nd, hundreds of students gathered at Plymouth White Marsh High School to compete for positions in the Pennsylvania Music Educators Association District 11 course. North Penn High School had 11 students selected to this highly competitive ensemble. The students were Christine Roberts, Megan Herr, Mitch Seipt, Matt Fritz, Tim Weir, Jason Scott, Jess Orgera, Kristen Herbert, Angela Dimmick, Brad Clements, and Kim Dunn, who received first tier honors for the, her category. Congratulations to the students. Congratulations to four high school students and one Pembroke student for participating in the Northeast Instrumental Music Festival High School Honors Band. The students were Kimberly Herbert, James Herbert Jr., Leslie Mogenberg, and Martin Whitmer. The festival took place in Lake Placid, New York from November 6th to November 9th. The North Penn High School class of 1999 recently held a community service project at the Highway Home for the Aged. 25 members of the class visited the home and paired up with a grandparent for the day. They played bingo and spent time socializing. The class hopes to visit the home again for future service projects. On Tuesday, November 18th, health classes from North Penn High School participated in the 1997 health fair. The health fair took place in the lobby of the high school from 2nd through 7th period. The fair had a variety of project displays put together by high school students. The projects ranged from dental hygiene to drinking and driving. Students came away with an improved knowledge of many health-related areas. North Penn High School Student Government Association recently held their biannual Red Cross Blood Drive. North Penn News reporter Jason Hefner has the story. The American Red Cross and North Penn High School's SGA held a blood drive last week in the high school's gymnasium. 190 students came down and 172 gave blood. Some students were turned down if they had a cold or didn't eat breakfast. The multi-step process starts with paperwork then a screening and interview with a nurse. After that, students went to a bed and gave one pint of blood. The blood giving takes about 10 minutes. Student volunteers then led the blood donors to a waiting area and were waited on. Student donors were given donuts and drinks to get their sugar level up while they rested. The blood drive was initiated through my community service committee and SGA. Um, it's, such a, it's, it's a wonderful cause simply because by donating blood here today, the blood that we give goes directly to Philadelphia and to hospitals and to children and to people in Philadelphia that need the blood. Getting a good amount of donors coming through in a very nice pace and everybody's been great. North Penn High School is looking to break the national record in May by getting 416 students to sign up to give blood. For North Penn News, I'm Jason Hefner. Congratulations to North Penn High School physical education teacher, Ms. Ginny Ward, for being selected as Pennsylvania's Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance Secondary Teacher of the Year. Each year, the organization honors one outstanding physical education teacher in the state at the elementary, middle, secondary, and university levels. Ms. Ward was honored during several events at the state convention held last week. Seniors Kate Staples and Josh Entz, students in Dr. Wal Kathy Walsh's creative writing class, recently had their epiphany pieces published in the December edition of the 21st century. Kate's work is titled Bridging the Age Gap, and Josh's piece is entitled Dirty Silverware and Other Casualties of Christmas. Congratulations to Kate and Josh. Construction has finally started on the new addition here at North Penn High School. Crews have already begun to cut down trees and remove the old parking lot in front of J-Pod in preparation for the new addition. 
the construction crews have also started laying dirt and gravel for the temporary parking area. This temporary parking lot will be used through the duration of the construction. When construction is complete, the temporary parking lot will then be repaved and ma made into a permanent parking lot. North Penn News will keep you updated on all construction activities. December is a busy month for all North Penn schools with concert and drama productions. Pendale Middle School held its fall drama entitled The Pink Panther Strikes Again. This past weekend, there was a sellout crowd at Penfield Middle School assembled its seventh graders for their winter, winter chorusal and band concert last week. Check your local school calendars for other performances by the North Penn students this month. Seventh grade students from Pembroke Middle School recently benefited from a multicultural learning experience. Students in Jennifer Loftus's English class and Anita Sopolitis's English as a Second Language class read a collection of stories in the New English text which explained the Americanization process. Mrs. Loftus's students learned firsthand what it is like to come from another country through the students in Mrs. Sapolitis's class. The students visited many classes and explained how difficult learning English is, now how cultures differ, and what experiences have been most re rewarding and challenging. The ESL students represented the countries of China, Colombia, India, and Korea. A learning experience for all was discovering how different life in America is and how challenging it is to come to this country not knowing the cultural, culture or language. Fourth and sixth graders at Oak Park Elementary School are participating in a unique program entitled Teachers and Students Investigating Planets in Space. The education project is part of a collaborative effort between NASA and the National Space Agency of Ukraine and involves students from both countries. The students are investigating whether plants can produce seeds without gravity. The students are running ground-based controls growing aster plants through a life cycle. Collected data will be submitted to NASA for their studies on the same topic, and results will then be posted on the World Wide Web. Here, students will be able to compare the two sets of data and draw their own conclusions. Bridal Pass students in grades 4 through 6 recently got a kick out of playing Tak Raw. Tak Raw is a game in the Southeast Asian countries of Thailand and Malaysia. The students observed basic kicks and a high-flying net game demonstration. This game is being considered a demonstration sport for the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia. Students at Inglewood Elementary School recently researched and prepared foods reflecting their ethnic heritage. Students were encouraged to write about why certain foods were important to their family. They also mapped their family origin and spent the afternoon feasting on a buffet of 65 dishes from appetizers to entrees. The activity offered a taste of multicultural diversity found in our classrooms. Sixth graders at Gwen Noor Elementary School recently had a chance to work side by side with Merck scientists. In honor of National Chemistry Week, the scientists came to Gwen Noor to help show students which chemicals cause certain reactions. The students enjoyed the experience and the scientists had a good time interacting with the sixth graders. The presentation was made possible by the Merck Institute for Science Education. Fifth and sixth graders at Oak Park Elementary School recently spent some time learning about the performing arts. North Penn News reporter Melissa Croak has the story. Oak Park Elementary School 5th and 6th graders had an experience of a lifetime thanks to a program called Art Smart. Art teacher Karen Jurina and music teacher Laura Barletta are piloting the Art Smart program for the North Penn School District. What it was is a visiting artist comes into our school and she worked with the 5th and 6th graders three times uh, sort of teaching them uh, what it means to be an actor, the kinds of things an actor has to think about when they're on stage, the way an actor prepares for a role. The Art Smart program has come to Oak Park as a result of the teachers' participation in the Career Development Partnership program last summer. Two of the teachers, Laura um, and Karen, the art and music teachers, actually came and job shadowed me this summer. They came and sat in on rehearsals with the actors and then they also sat in on um, some teacher, teacher workshops that I did down at the University of Delaware so that they could see what the program is like. An adaptation of the children's classic, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was selected as the performance piece for the Oak Park students. However, the performance was a little different than most. Playwright decided to do the adaptation with just two people and use a couple different theater techniques. One is a bare stage. There is no scenery. There's no backdrop. It's all left up to the children's imagination. The actors have to create the set through pantomime. Um, and the other thing is that there are no costumes, per se. It's blank costuming. The Oak Park students now had a job to do. 
I, with the students, created all the music to go with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So I actually taught the children how to create music for film. Uh, what you would do if you were a film producer and the producer comes to you and says, here's the movie, I need music, do it. And uh, they did find it very difficult, but we had a good time with it. And it's all their ideas, their creations. I probed, I brainstormed, I gave them questions, and they created. And I also worked with all the Oak Park students, having every student make a lion mask, getting ready for the play. So I told uh, kindergarten through fourth grade, I presented the story to them. And they discussed sort of different aspects of Aslan, the lion character, and what he could be like. And we discussed how it didn't have to be a realistic lion because he had so many parts to his character. And every student made a mask. Um, also, in sixth grade, every student chose their favorite part of the story, which they knew really well, and uh, illustrated it to share with the younger kids so that when I told the story to the younger kids, I could use those drawings. The students' hard work was put to the test during a live performance by the visiting artists from the Delaware Valley Art Institute. Oh. No, no, Mr. Thomas, he's half man, half goat. So him, and then like maybe was half a woman and half a turtle. No, no, I know it sounds like magic, but it's real. Well, sure, it's real, Lucy. It's real stupid. Now you are crazy, and that is the dumbest story I ever heard. I think it was really great for all of us. The kids loved it. One thing that they really got out of it, I think, was how involved, um, how involved all, I mean, they were working on this project in music. They were working on this project in art. Their classroom teachers were talking about it. The visiting artists came into their room and taught them acting exercises. They saw the performance. I was on the playground the other day, and some first graders were playing Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe at recess. So I think for them, it was such a, a great immersion experience for them to see uh, experience a work of art in so many levels and in so many ways. I think, I think Oak Park kids will remember it for a long time. For North Penn News, I'm Melissa Croak. Congratulations to Bridal Path fifth grader Philip Raynon, who won the D.A.R.E. poster contest sponsored by local D.A.R.E. officers and State Representative Joseph Gladdick. Philip accompanied off Officer Jim Reith to Harrisburg, where he met Pennsylvania Governor Tom Ridge and sat in on a legislative assembly. He also received a savings bond and was involved in the filming of a D.A.R.E. television program. Congratulations, Philip. And in similar news, congratulations to North Penn High School science teacher Dr. Melody Lighthold for winning the Armed Forces Communications Electronics Association Science Teaching Tools Award for the Philadelphia chapter. Each year, the local chapters of the AFCEA select one teacher to receive a grant for $1,000 to be used for the purchase of consumable materials to support experiments in science education. Applications are now available for the Pennsylvania Governor's School to be held next summer. Sophomore students can apply for the School of the Arts, the School for Agricultural Science, and the School for Teaching. Juniors can apply for all of the previous schools, in addition to the School for the Sciences, the School for International Studies, and the School for Healthcare. Applications and deadline information for these opportunities are available in the transcript office in the high school. The, Bra the Ron Brown Scholar Program is offering 10 scholarships valued at $40,000 for over four years to African American students. Criteria for the scholarships include academic excellence, leadership impacting the community, and financial need. The deadline for applications is January 8, 1998. More information is available in the Future Plan Center in the high school. The Discover Card Tribute Award Scholarship is available to high school juniors with a 2.75 cumulative GPA for two consecutive years. Other requirements include the student demonstrating an accomplishment in four or five given areas. The deadline for applications is January 13, 1998. If you are interested in this scholarship, please contact Mrs. Chiota Keller in the Future Plan Center. The scholarship is being offered to former students of the Head Start program. Interest parents of these students should contact Mrs. Higgins in the transcript office at 368 9800, extension 424. The Educational Testing Service has released the criteria for extended time or untimed testing for the SATs and the PSATs. The students to qualify, for students to qualify, they must have a current IEP 504 plan or evaluation from a qualified professional that indicates the need for extended time. Please contact your guidance counselor for more information and application procedures. Representatives from all branches of the military 
are scheduled to meet with North Penn High School students during all lunch periods on Thursday, December 11th. As a reminder, all male students are 18 or will be turning 18. You have the responsibility to register for the selective service. Registration forms are available from your local post office. Cap and gown measurements for the class of 1998 will take place on Wednesday, December 10th. Students are expected to pay a rental fee of $10 at that time. The fee may be paid in cash or by check. All checks should be made payable to collegiate cap and gown. Souvenir tassels will also be available at the time of the measurements for a cost of $3. North Penn High School school stores open daily from 7 10 a.m. until homeroom ends. The store is also open daily from 11 a.m. to 1.30 in the afternoon. The store is located next to the cafeteria and carries items such as North Penn clothing, North Penn spirit items, gym suits, and school supplies. The store is operated by the North Penn chapter of the Future Business Leaders of America. A tutorial assistance program is available to all North Penn High School students during school and after school. Students can receive help during the day in math room D112 and special assist education assistance is available in room B128. The, the Mac Lab and the IBM Lab are also staffed with teachers who can provide assistance with student writing. After school, teachers are available to provide extra help to students who need it. These sessions usually take place from 2.25 p.m. to 2.50 p.m. Since the demands on a teacher vary from day to day, students should schedule an appointment in advance to be certain the teacher is available. The Future Plan Center at North Penn High School will be open Wednesday nights from 7 to 9. Interested students can set up an appointment to discuss college and career information, view the college tour videos, or use the Guidance Information System computer. Please contact Mrs. Chiodo Keller in the transcript office to set up an appointment, and walk-ins are always welcome. Attention all North Penn parents. The State Department of Health has added the hepatitis B vaccine to the list of immunizations required for ch children entering kindergarten in September 1997. They are also suggesting that all children up to age 18 receive this vaccine consistent with the recommendation of the CDC and the prevention of the United States Department of Health and Human Services. For more information about this recommendation, please contact the North Penn High School Health Suite at 368-9800, extension 103. The North Penn High School is the site of the 1997 Holiday Craft Fair. North Penn News reporter Steve Schwartz has the story. The International Friendship Committee hosted its annual Invitational Fall Craft Show in the North Penn High School cafeteria. Student and adult volunteers began setting up Friday evening so the crafters could set up as early as 7 o'clock. They were ready for shoppers at 10 o'clock Saturday morning. The crafters were invited from all over the area and come because they like to help the International Friendship Committee and also enjoy the crowd. I like the people that come, they come by, it's great. Um, I like the other crafters, I think the quality is excellent. The people here take very good care of the craftsmen. They know how to take care of the craftsmen, they help you set up. They help you carry things in. Uh, they offer very good food. There's just a lot of pluses. The volunteers were members of the International Friends Committee. Students from the district, exchange students also joined in to help. Um, I have to work here at the craft show because I'm one of the exchange students and this craft show is for our benefit, the money they make. Um, it's used that we can be here and that students from America can go to other countries. And so we all work here and it's a lot of fun. Available at the craft show were delicious lunches provided in the faculty dining room. Other than the lunches, the shoppers mostly came for the wonderful crafts. Uh, some very talented folks are here. Uh, I think everyone can find a little bit of everything. The craft show benefited the International Friends Club and their exchange program. The shoppers browsed until 4.30 in the afternoon when the volunteers started to help the crafters disassemble their booths and be on their way. For North Penn News, I'm Steve Schwartz. The North Penn School Board recently held its annual reorganization meeting on Monday, December 1st. Newly elected board members Vince Chapinski and Frank O'Donnell, as well as returning board members Bill Allen and Vicki Schur, were officially sworn, sworn into their four-year terms. The new school board re-elected Donna Mengel as president for a one-year term, while Vice President Don Hill was also re-elected to his position. The new organi newly organized school board will meet for its first monthly work session on Tuesday, December 9th, and on Thursday, December 18th, the board will reconvene for the monthly action agenda meeting. 
Both of these meetings will take place at 7.30 p.m. in the Educational Service Center. The winter season is upon us, and North Bend Television Channel 16 is your source for school delays and closing information. As soon as the North Bend superintendent makes the decision, Channel 16 will immediately post all relevant school closing and delay information. Just look for these screens on your television. If you'd like to wait for the radio stations, WNPV 1440 AM and KYW 1060 AM will begin broadcasting school closings and delays beginning at 6 o'clock AM. The North Bend School District school closing code number is 303 for both radio stations. Stay tuned for North Bend High School Sports after this break. They've given us a label, Generation X, Generation Nothing. Why not wear a label that does mean something? Welcome back to North Penn News. In North Penn Sports News, at the Pennsbury Relays this past weekend, the North Penn swim team fared well against their competition. Steve Bonner and Ryan Hollenbach teamed up to set a meet record in the two-man diving competition, while Bonner set a pool record with his individual score. The 200 mixed relay team of Alyssa Moser, Chris Craig, Brittany Jernigan, Steve Fleming, Becky Nodasher, Lindsay Jernigan, and Jeremy Bergman set a meet record with a time of 129.29. The team also brought home first place finishes in the 200 medley relay, the 200 backstroke relay, the 400 individual medley relay, and the 200 breaststroke relay the 200 freestyle relay, the 200 butterfly relay, and the 500 crescendo relay. North Penn had a final score of 112 points, easily running away with the meet. The men's basketball team came up on the short side last Friday in a 69-57 loss to Neshaminy. The big key in the game was free throws. The Redskins hit 24 of 33 foul shots, while the Maidens were 9 for 21 from the line. The Maidens are now 0-3 for the season. The girls will travel to Bordertown this Wednesday for a non-league matchup. The North Bend Knights basketball team won its first game of the season last Wednesday with a thrilling 46-45 overtime victory over Wissahickon. Coach Mike Fergus picked up his 300th career victory in that win. The Knights could not keep their winning ways, however, as they lost to the Neshaminy Redskins in their league opener 60-46. The Knights now have a record of 1-3 and three and will host the Truman Tigers on Tuesday. The North Penn wrestling team is off to a good start, thanks to a hard-fought 32-25 victory over Methacken last Wednesday. After going back and forth with the Warriors for most of the match, the Knights began to pull away at the 160-pound match. When Greg Van Gilder won by disqualification, the Knights then sealed the deal with two more wins from Dave Messerschmidt and Kyle Berger. Also winning for the Knights were Adam Brown, Matt DeSombrino, Jeff Ceramic, Sam McCowie, and Gary Leatherman. The Knights will travel to Neshaminy to take on the Redskins in the league opener on Wednesday. It was a good start to the new season for the North Penn boys and girls winter track teams at the respective meets at Lehigh University last Saturday. The mile relay team of Kenrick Smith, Kevin Schmelick, Jason and Josh Hebner won the race with a time of 3 minutes, 38.08 seconds. The boys' two-mile relay team finished second with a time of 8 minutes, 25.05 seconds. Also for the Knights, Mike Mellish placed fourth in the triple jump with a finish of 40 feet, 2 and 1 half inches. The Maidens track squad received a new school record in the 55-meter dash from Allison Kelleher, who finished in 7.3 seconds. Nia Campbell took second place in the triple jump, while Megan DeSimone placed second in the 800-meter race, finishing in just two, under 2 and a half minutes. The boys will be in action next Saturday at Haver Haverford College, while the girls will be in Cutstown University in two weeks. Attention senior athletes. Many college athletic programs are regulated by the National Collegiate Athletic Association, or NCAA. The NCAA governs the rules on eligibility, recruiting, and financial aid for Division I, II, and III schools. If you're planning to enroll in college as a freshman and you wish to participate in a college sport, you must be certified by the NCAA Initial Eligibility Clearinghouse. Please see your guidance counselor or Mr. Ryan, the athletic director, for more information on NCAA clearinghouse requirements. And finally, an assembly on sportsmanship for sixth grade students was recently held at Montgomery Elementary School. The students were shown a video of an ESPN special that examined the level of sportsmanship in current sporting events. After the video, the students had a chance to ask questions of North Penn High School athletes 
Kyle Berger, Jen Krakow, Kurt Kaufman, Mike McKenna, Jason Payne, Bob Riffer, and Jamie Willis about their views on sportsmanship. The sixth graders followed up by writing about how sportsmanship can be applied to everyday life. The assembly was organized by Montgomery physical education teacher, Jason Theodore. And that is it for this edition of North Penn News. For the entire North Penn News crew, I'm Tony DiMizio. And I'm Sarah Conant. North Penn television programming will continue after the break. Explain how algebra, geometry, and calculus can improve your future. Demand that you be told. Call NACME. We'll tell you. We know we can count on you to do what Smokey says. Only you. No, you don't play with matches. That's not cool. Tell mom and dad to break them. Stomp them. Yeah, yeah, that's the rule. Only you can prevent forest fires. Crayon box that talk. While walking in a toy store the day before today, I overheard a crayon box with many things to say. I don't like red, said yellow, and green said, nor do I. And no one here likes orange, but no one knows just why. We are a box of crayons that doesn't get along. Said blue to all the others. Hmm, something here is wrong. Well, I bought that box of crayons and took it home with me and laid out all the colors so the crayons could all see. They watched me as I colored with red and blue and green and black and white and orange and every color in between. They watched as green became the grass and blue became the sky. The yellow sun was shining bright on white clouds drifting by. Colors changing as they touch, becoming something new. They watched me as I colored. They watched till I was through. And when I'd finally finished, I began to walk away. And as I did, the crayon box had something more to say. I do like red, said yellow, and green said so do I. And blue, you are terrific, so high up in the sky. We are a box of crayons. Each one of us unique. But when we get together, the picture is complete. Do you think you have the power to change the world? I can change the world one child at a time. I know I can make a difference in those children's lives. I teach. I teach. Yes, they're teachers, but to the kids they reach, they're heroes. I teach. Do you have the power to wake up young minds, to be someone's hero? Teach, to make an impact on our future. Call 1-800-45-TEACH. Be a teacher. Be a hero. 